research shows that many people do not know much about some of the hardest working creatures on planet Earth. Yes, I'm talking about bees. To rectify this, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the resolution on December 20th, 2017, declaring May 20th every year as the World Bee Day. The resolution, which was co-sponsored by 115 member states, aims to focus the attention of the global community on the importance of preserving bees and other pollinators. This resolution invites humanity to take action to preserve and protect bees on Earth. Bees, they say, are among the most important insects to humans. How important are they? The United Nations say without bees, the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, cannot achieve a world without hunger. What does that mean? How can humans help in, pres in the preservation and protection of bees when most people are afraid of getting stung by them? These are some of the questions we shall be getting answers to on the program Nigeria Today. I am Shegun Ojelade. I'm being joined in the studio by two gentlemen. I have with me Dr. Sunday Onjeu. He is the chairman, beekeeping strategic committee at the Raw Materials Research and Development Council, RMRDC. I welcome you to the program. Thank you for having me. Dr. Onjeu is also the national secretary of the Nigerian Apicultural Platform, NAP. Once again, I welcome you to Nigeria Today. Thank you, sir. Now, is on the program with Mr. Ademola Adeshino. He is the national president of Happy Cultural Platform. Now, I welcome you to the program. Thank you very much. Now, let me start with uh, Dr. Onjo. Uh, we, we're talking bees. Thank you. Uh, for which the United Nations has declared uh, a particular day uh, in the month of May as the World Bee Day. Uh, we've spoken about the strategic importance of bees uh, to, to mankind and to, to food security. What exactly are we talking about when we talk about bees as uh, pollinators? Thank you very much. Um, May 20 was adopted as World Bee Day because of its uh, importance, bees' importance to food security. Uh, let me start with, apart from the fact that the bee produces honey, uh, which we know is a vital raw material of food, ingredients in the food and beverage sector. Virtually almost every home we use honey. The pharmaceutical industry uses honey in production of uh, uh, cup syrups and other things. Other products of bees uh, are also useful uh, in cosmetics industries, uh, in the pomade and in the creams. Uh, we have wax, which we use uh, both in our textile industries and the paper making and others. Um, but specifically to answer you directly, the pollination aspect. Bees are responsible for more than 80% of crops pollination. And uh, without pollination, there can be no uh, fruits or, or seeds. And therefore, if you eradicate bees, uh, humanity will face starvation and hunger. Because uh, when you're talking about vegetables in terms of fruit, mangoes, oranges, uh, cashew, uh, bees are the major pollinators. Uh, that is critical. Uh, if, you, if you domesticate that to Nigeria, for example, today, if we allow our pollination just to chance by wind, um, that may not achieve uh, enough food security as we deserve. Particularly from where I work, raw material research we are interested mm. in bees because when you look at the beverages, when you look at uh, our mangoes, our oranges, the orchard, the plantations, we need the bees to pollinate the flowers because in the process of bees going to forage for pollen with which they convert to honey in their hives, 
they also move from female flowers to male, and they move from male to female flowers. But by that process, they pollinate. Research has shown, particularly with cashew, that uh, somebody that has a cashew plantation before, from, a, from just a tree, he realized that when he introduced hives, hives are the boxes where we keep for modern beekeeping, when he introduced hives into his plantation, his yield increased by 70%. Uh, without bees, that could not be achievable. Thank you. Now, I, I know that um, uh, beekeeping now is one of the uh, vocations, or let me say, farming practices with uh, which our youths are encouraged to go into. How is uh, beef? Uh, uh, is it bee farming or honey farming? Which one? Bee farming. Bee farming. Yes. Uh, well, bee farming is. Uh, an important vocation that uh, has been encouraged worldwide because of the benefits uh, the unemployed and the youth derive from beekeeping and because of the importance of bees to mankind. Bees happen to be the uh, precious animal that God has provided for mankind. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, it says, Go to the ants, watch how they live, and be wise. Be wise in the sense that there are so many activities that the bees get involved with which are beneficial to mankind. Uh, from pollination, that is uh, transferring uh, the eggs of one flower to the other. Uh, the bees transfer also uh, the nectar of flowers and they use this to produce honey. And uh, in taking advantage of the honey that they produce, you discover that there are other beehive products mm -hmm. that are very, very important which are beneficial to the health of mankind. We speak of uh, propolis, we speak of royal jelly, we speak of pollen grains, and uh, even the bee venom, which the bees produce, are uh, also very beneficial to health of man. Uh, th this is uh, the, the, the venom that they produce by, from stinging. And uh, when we speak of bees, many people will first of all think of the sting yes rather than uh, look at the other benefits mm. attached to it okay. bee venom is a very lucrative business worldwide and bee wax produced from the beehive too is a very very lucrative business okay worldwide thank you now that we are talking of the uh, business angle uh, to bees now. Now, to what extent have you have we been able to harness some of these potentials of bees? I'm I'm asking you now uh, from the point of view of your uh, organization, NAP. Yeah. Now, what are the uh, what are the works that have been done to ensure that more people go into bees, and then those of us that are afraid of it. Uh, the phobia, we are able to kill it. Thank you very much. For us in the, in the council, when I say council, I mean the Raw Material and Domain Council, having realized the, the, the important roles beekeeping can play in our daily living, like uh, the chairman has enumerated, uh, in two, as from 2002, the council has been, colla we collaborated with uh, an NGO in the United States because America and Argentina and Brazil, they have already, they, they, their own beekeeping industry is well developed uh, over the years. And so we, we, we receive volunteers from Winrock, Winrock International. We, for a period of five years, under a program called Farmer to Farmer, uh, we receive about six different uh, experts from the United States. Um, when they, uh, what we do with them, we took them around the country. Um, I was particularly happy to be involved in that project. We were in places like Ileife, Zaria, uh, Umuaha, we were in Ibadan, we were in uh, Bauchi, all over the country. And at the end of that program, we succeeded in training 2,000 Nigerian farmers. 
to, and then encourage them to also go into bees. Beyond that, we gave out hives. The hives is where, because we discovered that in our prison of uh, crisscrossing the country, we realized that our, our farmers, the few of them that are aware of the importance of beekeeping, they, they keep bees in what we call traditional hives. That is pots, gogs, uh, cavities of wood, uh, hollows in rocks, which will not give you uh, the best if you actually want to do it as business. And those things uh, make the, uh, the honey susceptible to adulteration. That is, too much of rains will get inside. Wind will blow dust and all sorts of things will get inside. And some of the material they use themselves are already contaminated with uh, bad bacteria and microorganisms. So ants can creep in, lizards can go in there, snakes can go in there because snakes go in there in attempt to eat the bees. And then so it, it makes the whole thing very, very unhealthy. And therefore our honey cannot even cross our borders. Before, so you cannot even talk about export. And the local industries too will not use them because they are adulterated. So we trained the farmers, we about 2,000 we are trained. We gave out hives. We also donated... Uh, How are the 2,000 doing now? Yeah, that has actually opened up the industry in the country. A lot of people that comes into BKP today uh, we are one time or the other under our training. Uh, without being, without boasting, my chairman here is a recipient of our award. Okay, now uh, let's talk about still on the business angle of bees. Um, what is our production capacity now uh, in terms of, and then what do we, what do they use them for? I know that uh, a small bottle of honey now costs a fortune. Probably it even cost more than than, than petrol. Um, so why that? Is it because we are not producing enough, or what? Or we are overpricing it? Well, I happen to be the chairman of uh, a honey producing company, A and Shine International Limited. Uh, we produce honey, and uh, we have been distributing honey now for the past 20 years in Nigeria. Uh, if you go to most shop price supermarkets, we're there and all major supermarkets in the country. I think the EU saw the prospect in honey business and then they launched a project called B Project for African member states where two representatives from each African countries were selected to represent their various countries. We happen to be representing, we have, to have represented Nigeria on that platform. It was from that platform that African Apiculture Platform was launched. And uh, following that is what led to the launch of the Nigeria Apiculture Platform. Because African Apiculture Platform executives in their community recommended that in order to move this sector forward, then every member state must launch their own national chapter of Apiculture Platform. And that was what led the Honorable Minister of uh, Agri uh, to launch in 2016 the Nigeria Apiculture Platform. Um, fortunately, uh, we that represented the country in, on the continental platform at their first executive meetings where uh, all the executive members were sworn in, Nigeria became the chairman, the first chairman of the African Apiculture Platform. And uh, this was what brought the wind of this business into the country that resulted in the launch of the Nigeria Apiculture Platform. Because of the hidden benefits, okay. which we, have, we are yet to tap into fully, um, Air and Shine to date produces uh, just enough to satisfy the local consumers. We are yet to go into the uh, export okay. market. Okay. And uh, we are striving now to be able to go into the export market. And that was what led the Nigeria Export Promotion Council to bring in uh, specialists from Uganda to train us on what we call residual monitoring process, okay. which will launch us into the European market. Now, <coughs> be, 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 because we are going on break very shortly, now I, I want you to look at beekeeping or the bee business 
In the next couple of years in Nigeria, from some of the work that you've done in uh, raw materials research and available castle, where are we likely to be and what can take us there? Quickly, because before we go on break. Yeah, thank you. The, the future is very, very bright. Um, more people are getting to beekeeping, particularly the youths and the women. Secondly, it is a rural ent enterprise. So, um, in, the, in the near future, of, in, in distance time from now, we will realize that because of the knowledge that is spreading, again, Nigeria is hosting the Africa in September this year. From September 25th, we call it APS Pro Happy Trade. Uh, the Roma is also serving on that board as uh, AOC, that's African Organizing Committee. Ethiopia hosted the same event in 2012. And thereafter, a lot of uh, over uh, 10 million US dollar uh, investment was uh, attra attracted into Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Okay. So we are hoping that Nigeria will do far better than and, uh, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Okay. So the, the, the future is very, very nice for us to, and it's very important that uh, our government, the government is doing so for us in the council. Okay. We saw this potential because, one, uh, like the chairman said, the, the honey that we are producing in Nigeria today. Uh, 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 we, 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 got, we consult uh, the pharmaceutical industry that is the people that uh, they, they said most of them are even importing their honey from Cameroon mm. and we want that to stop. We have the plantations, we have the vegetations from Lagos to Midugri, the, the flora that is, the flowers are there. Okay. All we need is the, the technique, the modern technique. Discard our old method of uh, doing it and adopt the new method. Okay. Uh, I must thank you, um, uh, uh, Dr. Sunday Onjo, uh, Chairman, Beekeeping Strategic Committee at the Raw Material Research and Development Council. We wish you the very best. Um, we will take a short break now. When we come back, another guest will join us on the show. But before then, some Nigerians have been speaking about bees beekeeping and honey we we'll take some of uh, their comments as we go on break yeah, bees are important number one they produce honey and uh, many people use honey to drink tea drink other stores and they find it very important and then they pollinate our uh, plant that's a very good importance and they contribute so much to the life cycle they produce honey, and I know honey is good for the health. It has economic benefits to the society. If you, if you go to most of these big stores, you find out the product of bees being sold. So it employs labor. It gives back to the society. Bees are of numerous importance in a human. The oil itself, it is medicinal. It cures a lot of diseases in the body. The sugar content of honeybee is more hygienic to the body, more than ordinary sugar that people take that sometimes are harmful to some of the systems and organs of the body. So that is why to me, I take honeybee. I prefer it to sugar. But it has some, some nutritional values uh, and um, it's sweet and it's natural. Where you can, uh, you can get it, it's always very expensive. And it's not every average person that can purchase it. Hey, welcome back. The program Nigeria Today continues. We're looking at the potentials of uh, uh, bee, uh, keeping bees and honey and honey business in Nigeria. We've been joined by another guest now. He is Dr. Akim Aboladi Oyeridi. He is the he is a consultant to the Raw Material Research and Development Council uh, on strategic beekeeping project. He is also the assistant secretary of the Nigerian Apicultural Platform. Now, I welcome you to the program. Thank you, sir. Now, I know you to be a farmer. Uh, but I never knew that you are, you, are, you, are, you are also into beekeeping. Now, what is your interest in beekeeping, um, being an agriculturist? I've been uh, a bee researcher for close to 20 years and uh, as uh, an only bee entomologist. That's my area of uh, specialization. Being the National PRO and Assistant Secretary of Entomological Society of Nigeria as well. 
So the bees are very important to us in the insect group and they are very important to farmer. For example now, the, you find out that uh, pollination services is the one that is important for regeneration of our crops. Mm. If there is no pollination, you will not have uh, crops, you will not have seeds, and you will not have fruits. So as a farmer, you must be pertinent, you must take responsibility of protecting the bees and conserving them. So that's the area of uh, uh, research that uh, I've been doing for quite a long time. Now, I, I know that there are, oh, we all know there are millions of Nigerian youths out there still looking for what to do. Uh, the white collar jobs are no longer there. But there's some of the things that we've said on the program. Maybe there, there are one or two of them that have said, ah, okay, beekeeping can be a, a very good opportunity for investment and, and, and then to get employed. But we are afraid of being stung by bees. Uh, uh, look, fortunately, my chairman is here. And uh, what we have now, we have so many youths that are involved in beekeeping. Beekeeping is a little bit wide. Maybe because you are thinking it's a small thing. Apiculture entails having about eight to nine products. And those products can give you millions of naira. Let me give this scenario. For example, you are buying a liter of uh, petrol for 145 naira. Yes. A liter of honey minimally is between 2,000 and uh, 3,000. Uh, which means if we have more honey, yes. you will have more money. And from the hive, you don't have only honey as a product. You have the venom, you have the royal jelly, you have uh, yes. uh, so many products that you can take from a single hive. Mm. And ready-made market is available both locally and internationally. How do we encourage youths to go into beekeeping? Well, I think the stage is now set for youths to be encouraged. With the launch of the Nigeria Apiculture Platform, and uh, with the bid to host the entire Africa and the rest of the world in what we call RP Expo 2018, uh, we will have more than enough to see and to chew as far as beekeeping and other beehive products are concerned. Uh, it will interest you to know that uh, the RP Expo 2018 is a version of the World Honey Congress that normally take place around the world every two, two years. We call it Apimodia. And uh, to God be the glory, uh, Nigeria was f well represented in Turkey during the last Apimodia. And we saw what has happened. And we are determined that this Api Expo 2018 coming up in September is going to turn around the country's economy dramatically. Because we will have the opportunity to see on display several beehive products and innovations in beekeeping okay. that we never can think we could have. Okay. Yeah. Hey, doctor, if, you, if, if we talk beekeeping now, maybe well, maybe in those days, what you see is uh, somebody dressed like uh, an Eskimo going into the moon, you know, everywhere covered, and they're usually in the bush. Okay. Uh, now, unlike poultry, where you can use the back, back of your house, the backyard, or a very small space within the human community, to, where do we normally have beehives today? When I was with the uh, University of Illinois, I started their beekeeping project, mm -hmm. still on. I find that there are some people that I consulted for the, in the learning that were keeping the bees behind their houses. What we just did is to have uh, signs being put to cut off people that we don't want to come within that area. The bees are with you here. Even in your studio in the, early in the morning tomorrow, if you go to where you have flowering plants, they are with you. They are with us. Wherever we live, bees are with us. So we should educate ourselves. Bees are not as dangerous as we think. If you, even if you have a bee sting, that is what we call epitherapy. It can oh. control some of the ailments, some of diseases. <laughs> what you don't need to have is to have excess of the sting. It's like you going to the hospital and they give you injection. If you have excess of that injection, it will work against you. So what we need is uh, sensitization and education.
And since Africa is coming to Nigeria, I think the better option is for us to give them what we are. Can I, can the, I have a beehive at the back of my house? You can. Wow. What you need is the basic knowledge. Because I remember that uh, when you talk about whether bees sting, or what, what makes bees to sting you is the fear. Because immediately bee is coming around you, you secret adrenaline. And the bee immediately picks that, that, oh, this man is fearing and is carrying my product. In the pharmaceutical cream he's putting on, I have my product. In the lipstick, my product is there. So the bee is coming around for his product. But when you start struggling and you start fighting, the bees will fight back. And you should remember, any bee that sting you will die. And nobody wants to die. No bees want to sting. Okay, if your final word on the program uh, but to encourage Nigerians to take bee, I mean honey. Well, it will interest us to know that even in our factory, we have some prototype beehives. Okay which are already colonized okay. with bees. Okay. And we walk around and uh, nothing happens. Okay. So we want to encourage uh, yes. the youths, retirees, yes. to go into beekeeping, okay. not just for any other thing, but at least to improve their income. Okay, in less than... Okay, only. let me sensitize us. Yes. European Union last two weeks banned the use of some agrochemical pesticide, yeah. about two precisely because of bees. Because the world within that area, they are losing their population of bees. Nigeria has the highest population of bees in Africa. Wow. Let's focus on that. Let's use that to diversify our economy. I, I must thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Uh, thank you, Dr. Akim Abolade Uyuride, uh, President of uh, NAP, for all that you said on the program. Thank you very much. Thank and you, then, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, I also thank you for all that you said. Thank, thank you, you very much uh, uh, thank you. for all that you said. We wish you the very best in all that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, this is where we call it a date on the program Nigeria Today. We shall be back tomorrow for the last edition in the week. Do join us. Bye bye. I am Shelby.